The shell is a program that processes our commands that we enter and returns outputs. It's worth getting familiar with the shell because it's an incredibly powerful tool. For now, we're just going to cover some basics like navigating the, the file system and making files. As we move further through the workshops, we'll cover more specific commands and scenarios as we cross them. Let's go. So there are a couple of ways we can access the shell. One that we've already done is to run the, ter the terminal emulator from here. The other is that we can open up the Pi menu, go down to accessories and go to terminal. And I'm just going to increase the font size just to make it a little friendlier. Okay. So the first thing we're greeted with is the prompt. Pi is the current user and Raspberry Pi is the machine that we're accessing. This tilde character is a special shorthand for that home Pi directory that we saw in the last video. And this dollar symbol is the prompt. It's the shell waiting for our commands. So let's uh, just, just on that tilde character, if we print working directory, which is PWD, we can see that tilde corresponds to slash home slash pi. Now we can list the contents of the directory that we're currently in with the ls command. And we can see that there are a few items. These, these blue items are in fact other directories, so we could move into them. But for now, what we're going to do is just create a, a little sandbox to play around in for chapter one. And we're going to use the make directory command, which is mkdir, and I'm gonna call this this directory ch1 for chapter one. And we can see that there's, there's, no, there's no feedback. Our command has just been executed, but it's been executed silently. The, the shell assumes that we know what we're doing and that we don't need to be bothered with constant reassurance that what we've directed it to do has actually been done. So we can execute the ls command again to see that yes, our chapter one directory has been created. So let's move into that now with the cd command. That's for change directory. We're going to cd to chapter one directory. And it's important to note that now our prompt has changed. It's updated the prompt to show us our current directory. And we could print working directory again. But I mean, this, this is just as good. As long as we always remember that the tilde is shorthand for the home directory, then this prompt is telling us that we're in home pi chapter one. While we're here, let's make a couple of extra directories just to, just to um, practice using some commands. So let's make three directories. I'm going to, I'm going to make directory test one. I'm gonna make directory test two and make directory test three. And of course, all of that happened without any feedback. And if we execute ls, there they are. So now I've got my chapter one directory with three smaller directories inside it. How about we make a text file? We can do this with the nano text editor. And if we execute nano, it will just open the nano program and we can write our file. If we already know what we want to name the file, we can put in a name here like text file and that will create a, a file called text file in the directory we're currently in. Now I could navigate into test one and create the test file there, the text file there, or when I'm creating the file in the file name, I could enter a relative path to where I want to put the text file. So I could say test one, slash text file. And this is going to say, from where I am currently, there is already a directory called test1. And in that directory, I want to create text file. So if we strike enter, we, we leave the shell and we're presented with the nano text editor. So we have uh, an empty screen to enter our text. And down the bottom, we have our, this is a, like our menu. This is a very, very stripped back text editor, as you can see, it's very simple. These are caret symbols, these up arrow symbols represent a control. So a control X would exit the program. 
let's just enter some text. I'm just going to say, hello world. And now I'm going to press Control X to exit. Um, we're greeted with this save modified buffer message. That's just saying, do you want to save the changes? And I do, so I'll, I'll select Y for yes. And because we already entered a file name for this text file, it's already populated test1 slash text file into the file name to write. And because that, I mean, that's what I want to call it. So I'm just going to strike enter. And when we do that, we're dropped back into the shell. So we can perform LS. We can see nothing has changed. Rather than jump into the test1 file with the CD command and then executing LS to see if our text file is there, we can just say LS test1. And that's that's just passing to ls, I want to I want to list the contents of this directory. And we can see that text file is indeed there. And again, we could, uh, we could edit the text file and we don't even have to be in the test one directory to do it. We can just execute nano text test slash text file again. And to recall that command history, I've just used the up and down arrow keys to scroll through the past commands that I've issued. So I can go back up to nano test one text file and start editing the text file without actually having to be in the, in the directory. I'm just going to control X out of that. Now let's, let's delete our text file. So we could use the RM command to delete the text file and rather than CD into the directory, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to say, in the test one directory, uh, there is a text file, there is a file called text file. And that appears to have worked. Again, there's no feedback. So we can, we can delete files, potentially important files, and we won't receive any feedback about it. So again, we can perform our LS. Where was that? I don't know, so I'm just going to LS test one, and we can see that test one is empty. So we've, ma we've managed to write a text file, delete it, make a few directories. Now let's delete the directories. We could try to RM the test one directory, but RM has a, a built-in safety. RM is no good for deleting directories just used as is. Um, and we can see that we can't remove test one. It's a directory we could use the rmdir command, which is made for removing directories that are only empty. So it will only ever remove an empty directory. If I tried to use this command when text file was in test one, we wouldn't be able to do it. But if we remove directory test one and ls again, we can see that test one has disappeared. To, um, if the if the screen ever gets a little too cluttered or messy or overwhelming, you can of course always just keep striking enter to create space, or you can type clear, and that clears the window for you. Now I'm going to remove the other two test directories, so we can see that we have test two and test three remaining. And rather than manually type out test two, test three in the rm directory command, I'm going to use the wildcard. So I can type in rm empty directory, remove empty directory, rmd, and I'm going to type in test, and then an asterisk, which is a substitute for any number of characters. If I execute that and perform ls again, we can see the directory is empty. So that concludes running over the basics of the shell. In the next video, we're going to learn how to keep our Raspberry Pi up to date.